Yeah. Or that one time our dickhead stepdad thought it'd be a hot idea to raise a pig, but didn't know a word one about taking care of animals, and wouldn't listen to anyone who did, and so the thing was always escaping from its pen and rooting up the garden and teaching my dog how to root and snort too, which was cute, but not necessarily helpful. Or how Dickhead always had to wrestle the pig to get it back in its pen, and by the end they'd both be kicked and shit and bloodied and bruised, and Dickhead always acted like he'd taken that hill, but the pig every time eventually got loose again. So, who was really the king? Then later, the pig got tangled in those evil wild rose vines that had eaten up the chicken house after we'd lost our chickens to the weasel. So after that, the pig was rashy and mean, and even my dog didn't want to play with it anymore. And then it bit mom on the ass, so my stepdad had to put the pig down, even though it was only August. But even that had to be a goddamn travesty. What, with the pig running bloody around the yard with two, then three bullets lodged in its skull before the fourth shot finally took it down. And even after all that, Dickhead still had something to prove. To who, I can only imagine. The pig, I guess and so slaughtered it himself instead of hiring a butcher, which now meant that we had a freezer full of inedible, bloody pork chunks and a wheelbarrow brimming with guts roasting in the August sun. Which also shouldn't have been a big surprise. Dickhead half-assing a job, then leaving the rest half done. And after a week of that nest of fermenting intestines, stretching and ballooning toward a messy, wet pop, guess whose job it suddenly became to dispose of Piggy's guts? I guess because my dog was still running around snorting and rooting, it was easy enough for Dickhead to pin this all on me. So here I am on a Sunday afternoon, all of eight or maybe nine years old and spindly as the straw in a worn out broom, trying to steady a wheelbarrow with a flat tire downhill toward the compost pile and doing my best not to breathe with all these metallic green flies streaming off the guts in a haze of stink you could literally see. Seriously, who'd have blamed me for crying? I thought the pig was cool. Luke Skywalker had been his name. So when the flat tire fetched on a piece of garbage in the grass and the whole wheelbarrow tipped over, dumping ripe guts all over the lawn like the worst kind of nightmare, I didn't feel scared so much as relieved. I'd done everything I could. And now, one last time, the stubborn ghost of Skywalker was free. I mean, that's bullshit. I was probably a little bit scared, because I called for my dog and we hid in the woods playing make-believe pony show until long after supper time had come and gone. I knew I was going to catch heat for this, but man, I was bound to catch heat for something anyway. I guess I was just hoping it'd be different this time. Dickhead and the pig had loved to wrestle, and here I'd rigged a match Dickhead could actually win. This time, he'd wrangle that sucker right where it belonged dragging 30 feet of intestines and sour liver and lungs to the compost pile, where wild animals were sure to dig them up anyway and strew them around the yard, but whatever. He'd fight the fight and stand tall in the end, caked in shit and bloodied in victory. You can thank me any day now, dickhead. <laughs>